wait for all the meters to show me that it looks like it's connected. Welcome once again to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th ed campaign. Uh, this one, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, spawned during the early part of 2020. And continuing on with our different crew of people. Uh, some familiar faces, if you've uh, watched the first game, you would see the same faces, but entirely different characters. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I am the, uh, I guess, host, as well as the uh, GM of this particular game. Uh, the the uh, creator of Omesha, my, my own homebrew world. The Great Confusion takes place 1,000 years before the incident of the first campaign. Uh, back to the, the basis for which that campaign was made in some ways. But I'm joined as ever by my wonderful players, starting <coughs> on my left with Pat. My name is Pat, and I'm playing Silas Marsh. Uh, and we're currently stuck in some poopy tunnels. Hi, I'm Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who is very perplexed by this door. I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric. And a uh, question to the DM. Uh, were we supposed to hear the opening song? Because I didn't hear it. I did hear a cat meow in the background, though. <laughs> if I've got my audio set correctly, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> no, we, we do not hear the music. It, it, it uh, shouldn't be going to you. I hear it. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's uh, the, amazing. The cat was MJ that had the zoomies all of a sudden. Meow. <laughs> uh, and I'm just trying to start my secondary recording here because I want to. Okay, there we go. Because I want to make sure we've had some technical issues in the past uh, that I've I've lost all of the recordings. So now I'm getting more paranoid or appropriately paranoid uh, with the machines that are surrounding me. So uh, because we are stuck in the midst of a, uh, a map at the moment, I'm actually going to slip, switch to the map screen and we'll start the recap from there. That was the slowest fade ever. I don't know if you guys saw the same thing. Freaking I did. lag. <laughs> lag is everywhere. Um, so what happened? I die. I'm blaming lag. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> in, in, in the role playing game, we can just wait. <laughs> uh, anyway, the the summary for the previous uh, episode before Christmas. Silas Marsh sought to commune with Mother Hydra, entering the sea and meditating deep under the water. He implored her for direction and how to take the clan, what her needs were and how he might achieve them. While it seemed to him that her power was distant, Mother Hydra did command numerous sea creatures to demonstrate her will. The clan will be led by the strongest leader, but ultimately she is in charge. There, her will is for her to return. The group reconvened later in the morning at the Three Bells and met the aged dwarf named Marta Pitdigger. She's the last descendant of the dwarven family responsible for building and designing the sewers beneath Aelthvater, and works in them still. She takes them. She took them down below, into the surprisingly elaborate tunnels underneath the town. There is unexpected danger when a pair of hungry crabtopuses attack them, having apparently wandered into the sea tunnels. After recovering somewhat, Marta delightedly took them on a tour of her favorite spot of the tunnel, a strange place called The Well. In this ancient area, steps led down to a water spout of pure water that seemed to come up from below. Old, worn statues lined four corners of this space, all poised as if watching The Well. On one wall, Annie noticed a pair of ever-burning sconces were lit, and taking a cue from Marta's words that these indicated safe places, examined the wall thoroughly. There she discovered subtle carvings that are more felt than seen, much more like the ancient, much more like the uh, door at the ancient sunken temple they had visited before, and determined that a hidden door had been there all along, much to Marta's surprise. However, despite their best efforts, the door resisted them although they determined that a jagged space at one point describes the perp perfect place for a crystal of some kind, which would act as a key. Marta has also mentioned another destination, the filter, and that seems likely to be the next de destination for the group. 
And here we are gathered in this space. You're gathered around where you believe the door to be. Uh, I don't know if you guys can draw on the map. You might want to draw an X there if that's something you want to return to. Uh, pardon me while I kill some spam. Let's see. Ban. That's a fun button. Uh, what would you like to do? I think we were just heading to the filter. Yeah, or maybe taking a short rest if we need to. Sure. <clears throat> That's up to you guys. Hey, Marta, how long do we have until the water comes up? She kind of tilts her head back, and you can kind of see the, the mental calculation going on. Oh, dearie, more than three and a half hours at least. Probably four, depending on how that storm is doing. It tends to kick up a lot more water than we're used to down here, so we tend to be a little more conservative in our estimates. All right, and uh, you said there's, pl there's places where we can hide out if we do take too long, right? Oh, there's numerous little places down here that are sealed against the water. Some of us even prefer to live down here. Well, not too many around right. the around the the well. Well, uh, I could use a short rest to heal up the craptopus wounds from earlier. What about you guys? Sure. I mean, if you if you need need to, we should probably do so. That way, if something else happens. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's she roll lead, some hit dice. Hmm? She leads you down to uh, a spot not too far away. There's actually one of the the. Oops, I grabbed the wrong level. One uh, a room, uh, if you want to, where she'll let you into. Not far away from the well. Um, she describes it as a place that she typically stays. Stays. It's it's small inside, but big enough to hold everybody. There's a couple of uh, well, three chests in there, which serve as nice uh, places to sit. Inside one of the chests, actually, she pulls out uh, what looks like a, a squarish uh, um, uh, ceramic urn. Uh, opens it up and pours each of you some fresh water. We bring it down here and leave it from time to time. I've tried to fill it from the well, but it's, it's hard to get close enough without walking through all the other crap around it. Oh, thanks. I'll take some. Okay. It's a fairly cool, clear water. Nothing particularly spectacular about it. But uh, clearly much different from the murky, somewhat greenish, algae-filled, glowing water that surrounds most of the place. The uh, A short rest takes about an hour. Is there anything else you'd like to do during that? Either talk or anything at all. I'm just looking up again how many spells I get back because I forget it every time. Uh, clerics, I don't know if they get recovery. Actually. No. no. Not, not at all? No. No, I think Wiz there Wizards are... Wizards are the only long-term casters that get that. Um, your... Um, Some the... subclasses do, though. Yeah, there's Divine Interventions, or not Divine Interventions, sorry. Um channel divinity some of those channel divinities sometimes yeah. come back but it depends upon the sub the subclass um, in this case the the Kmart don't don't have any uh, returns like that not yet anyway yeah. uh, wizards and warlocks and I think sorcerers get some things back not sure about bards but there are numerous other things well, I'm at full HP now. Woo. Okay. Um, so, no other activities while the uh, while the the uh, Marta. So basically, chat, like... but nothing. Okay. General banter, as in, like, even though I hate the storm going on outside, I'm gonna be thrilled to be back into it, so I can like rinse all this gunk off my cloak and my armor and etc. <laughs> Yeah, Silas will take time to prep 
press to digitate people cleaner. Awesome. Uh, well, let's try not to fall in again, eh? I didn't fall in. <laughs> or to go in. Cold. Well, you waded in towards the center of the well, I think. Oh, that one, yeah. yeah but the well is clean. <laughs> the well is, but it's surrounded by the, the murky algae-filled water. So, um, And Marta asks you some questions about, you know, what you guys do normally and um, just kind of generally get to know you questions. What sort of answers would each of you give? Who wants to go first? Or you can give no answers at all and you can be completely silent. That's up to you. Well, I used to be in the military and then uh, developed an aptitude for healing arts and fire. So I followed the path of Ignis and it's led me here. Like, I don't know what happened. Apparently we won the war, but now all the soldiers have been laid off and we've had to find out things to do to earn our pay and all that stuff. And Marta kind of has a, a, a sort of strange reaction to the notion of the war. It wasn't really something that she ever felt connected to. So she knows even less about it than you do, which is surprising in some ways. Um, but she had a uh, family who had fought years and years and years ago. You get the idea that probably before you were born, um, she lost some siblings to uh, faraway fighting and uh, has a little bit of a sour thought towards that. She does offer her, uh, her sympathy, though, on the loss of the temple up above. Um, Thanks. We'll try to get it rebuilt. Very good. I'm not so much of a designer these days, but the family would be. Some of them might be able to lend a hand, although none of them are in town anymore. Oh, excellent. I'll keep that in mind. I know where to find you. No, I'm not far and from here the most of the time. We have some... Uh, we have some... Uh, mace, uh, the high-quality masonry tools we found the other day as well. Perhaps, uh, Medric, we could trade those in for some work in the temple or something. Are you sure? They look pretty fancy. I, I mean, mean I, I certainly won't say no to help. But... Well, I mean, it, hopefully you would get a lot for them, but uh, you might be able to trade it in for a significant amount of the work or something. They did look very fine quality. They did. Yeah. Couldn't tell if they were dwarven make or not, but. Uh... I also kind of grabbed those and shoved them in my bag. Mm hmm. While you guys were walking the other way. Well, I think we did get to look at them at some point. They were described to us, but. Oh. Uh. I just don't remember sharing that. Would she have shared it uh, with the rest or would she keep it herself? Honestly, she probably would have forgot about them because they're, they're just in her bag. She hasn't had much time to sit. So. Okay. And that's when we hear like a rewind noise and it's like, well, Marta, that, that would be great. I'll, I'll make sure to let you know. <laughs> this was in the, the temple with the, the staff, right? Because everybody yeah, yeah. had gone forward at that point because she, she saw them grab them and then the temple was falling down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we looked at it when we stopped outside and had that rest. Maybe. That's up to you guys. What, what, what would yeah. be... What do you determine is the truth? <laughs> Just so that I know. Sure, she she would have shared it. Like, like I said, though, it's it with everything going. I don't know if she would have, but we can say she did. So we have now the fast forward sound as we reinsert really? that reel into the <laughs> ongoing saga. Um, actually, Marta asks. Do you have them with you? 
Probably not. They're pretty heavy. Ah, shame. I would have liked to have seen them, but um, maybe another time. Definitely. You, you'd know them better than, than I. Well, mostly at my father's knee. I was never much of a builder, but I saw what he had made. Um, what does uh, Annie say about who she is and what she's doing here and what the normal time is or whatever diversion she might give? Her basic line of she's traveling, she just wants to see, see as much as she can before taking over. Well, just see as much <laughs> as she can before going home. <laughs> before taking over <laughs> a little bit of a I was going to say taking over the family business but then that that opens oh. the can of worms of what the family business is fair enough fair <laughs> enough Marta's quite surprised at uh, having traveled even that much um, and you get the impression that she's not gone far from Ilthvater at all maybe to the mountains uh, because she does mention sort of family off in that direction but for the most part she's just been here wandering through these tunnels or or uh or through the town itself, kind of tending to herself. And for Silas, she doesn't seem to know much about you, so for her, your family doesn't seem to hold as much uh, recognition as before. He says, I'm just a entertainer trying to make the world a better place. Oh, well, would you care to share a song then? To pass the time. I'd share a story, complete with illusion. She seems delighted, um, and kind of uh, you see in this this older woman's face. She's not. She's had kind of a neutral, pleasant expression most of the time, but there's just that that edge of of uh, of happiness uh, that's been brought from this this story. Um, a bit of a, a smile, and you can see she's missing a few teeth from, from her ancient age. What is the story? Just uh, uh, give me a, a, a one through line. Mm. Great. I had some of these thought up, but now I've lost them. Um, Doesn't have to be elaborate. How the, yeah. Uh, how the earth and the sky were separated by the sea. Yeah. Sort of a mythological tale then. Mm-hmm. Okay. After the time passes, everybody's had a chance to get your hit dice in order, and everybody's had a chance to reset whatever's reset. Um, when the rest is, is over, oh, yeah. the, the water was refreshing. There wasn't much to it. There wasn't any extra meal or anything like that. But uh, Marta seemed to be interested in passing the time with you. She leads you out once again. And once again, it's a bit of a uh, of a of uh, an elaborate backtrack over the different spaces. Uh, and I didn't get a chance to fix the map, but there is a, essentially a missing, a missing bridge um, to it but uh, I will try to lead you uh, along that way. Uh, first crossing the bridge and then moving back where you had been before. I'm gonna zoom out the map for folks at home. It's also a good idea for me to be able to remember <laughs> what I've revealed on the map and what I haven't. Um, but again, it's not a... Uh, uh, complex path mostly just a bit of backtrack and a that was a spectacular travel. jump you did she did over that river there well sorry there is a bridge <laughs> there is a bridge that i just didn't uh, i didn't cross over the bridge um this is the place where the the uh the bad bridge actually is there's supposed to be a bridge there and i realize i haven't revealed some more of this so i will do that as well On this Follow journey. the yellow slime road. Da, da. <laughs> Essentially. Um, and again, without Marta here, you feel like it would be um, easy to get lost in this underwater or underground area. 
Uh, she seems to take the turns easily enough without much concern. Uh, she's moved off to your to the uh, east there from where you are. Uh, I see Silas hasn't moved yet, but I can move you and catch you up as well. Sure. Hey, Silas, do you want to drown? Come on over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. I'll move, move him when we reach a point where we stop. <laughs> right. Um, you reach, a, there's a, another bridge that you cross over. This is one of the places that uh, uh, Annie actually had insisted that you check out. This is the place filled with barrels, some of them with oil and some water and different things like that. And she had pointed this out before, uh, but now takes you over to this opening in this space and says, In there's the filter. Through the natural mechanisms of the water flow in here, and some clever designs about gates and so forth, uh, my family was able to devise a mechanism by which most of the debris that gets brought up from the sea gets sort of filtered in this particular direction. And inside there will find all sorts of flotsam and jetsam, maybe what you're looking for. But I will offer a caution— uh, there's a little bit of a bug that, that uh, moves in there. I call him Old Bitey. He's generally pretty kind and, and unbothered, uh, as long as you don't bother him, so long as he's eaten recently. And since Ty had just come in, I'm sure he's had a bite or three. Maybe he ate a bunch of crab crabtipuses. That will make it so much easier for us. Indeed, their bodies should flow in this direction eventually. And she shows you into a space that um, is fairly large. And you can see, although I didn't get a chance to put it on the map itself, um, there are uh, debris piled up. The water is deeper in the middle, filled with all kinds of, uh, of debris and what look like everything from driftwood to boxes to there's a spar clearly of a, of a ship that's in there that somehow made it through all these tunnels. Um, each of you can make a perception check as well. All right. Ooh. The smell is overwhelming for Annie as she steps in. Uh, and for Medrick. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the, just the sheer mass of junk uh, in disorder seems uh, alarming to Medrick. Uh, but... Silas, unaffected as you are by the toxic elements of the air, um, looks you at all see, the stuff and goes, "Ooh!" You see, you know, piles upon piles of things. It looks like a couple of unbroken crates that have been carried all the way in here, sort of bobbing slightly in the water. But you do make out a little bit of motion inside. Uh, it looks as though swimming in and around the junk pile, there does appear to be some sort of creature. Um, judging from the amount that was displaced and the different spaces you saw it, it's long and slender and about as wide around as half a man, uh, to use a, a, an odd old-fashioned sort of measure. So it's about two or three feet uh, at least in diameter, if not more, swimming around inside. Uh, there's a big snaky thing in there. Oh, by the might want to keep to the edges. Can you talk to it? I yell out, hello, snake. <laughs> it's like, hello, nurse? <laughs> Is that the idea? I don't know. I can talk at it. Right, right. I mean, you can certainly try. Do you know if he's eaten? I'll ask this to Murda. Oh, I'm not as tender, but he tends to eat the different bits and pieces of fish and flesh that float in. I'm just wondering if we know if he's feeling bitey or not before he actually becomes bitey or not. So long as you don't disturb him, you should be all right, if this is what you wish to seek. Sometimes useful items can be found down here. Sometimes not much, but broken wood, but that sometimes recovered as well, dried out over time and can be used to burn a little fire here and there, keep us warm. I'll just kind of follow people around the edges. 
well, where are people going? Marta is just sort of standing there. She's, she has no particular reason to dive in at this particular moment, but you guys are looking for something down here, and she knows this is another feature. Well, is this area wider? Is it still the one person only in a line thing? Uh, once you get down to the corner, and really reasonably you can walk around each other in most places, but around the corner there are wider edges where it's easy to walk around. Okay. Um, so my brain had a question it left. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yes. What's this here? Is that just the wall? That's just the wall. Yeah. For whatever reason, I decided to make it brighter there. I don't know why. <laughs> Inaccuracy in me revealing things, I guess. Cool, cool. Here's well. Yeah. Well, Silas is just going to look around for anything that feels like it might control the storm or be a crystal key. Same. I'm okay. also keeping an eye. I remember Gaetano, the, the captain, mentioning that Gaetano's stuff went overboard. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye for anything that seems like would fit that, any of his stuff. Okay. Across the uh, back wall, uh, kind of the south wall, according to this, the the map specific compass, if you will, there is a, a set of poles kind of hanging up against the wall, and Marta points them out. They're about uh, about fifteen feet long. They're kind of spindly, but at the end they have attached a metal hook, uh, and she suggests that if you want to reel in some of the material, you can use the hook. Uh, each of you can make an investigation check if you're going to go looking through this stuff. Where this is using a tool that requires some dexterity to use, can I use dexterity? Um, that'd be more that you would be trying to reel something in or do it delicately. This is more just kind of shoving and, and, and noticing things from about, you know, 12 feet away. Okay. In a dim okay. room. I did not. <laughs> okay. Silas, I think you're more engaged with looking for something more powerful and also keeping an eye on that creature that seems to be swimming in and around all this stuff. Every once in a while, you notice a little bit of movement here and there as if it's sort of watching you uh, swimming back and forth, and it keeps your attention pretty tightly. I'll slowly go up to where Silas is. Are we out of earshot from Marta? Probably, if you don't speak too loudly. Right. Hey, Silas, are you looking for anything like right here, right now, or can we move to the upper, to the uh, other corner? I'm not finding much. If you want to move up there, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know that one time when you said, and I'm whispering this, by the way. Okay. That one time you said you could talk to snakes. Could you do that with that snake? I didn't realize uh, that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I could <laughs> I try. I mean, I'm just with us, so my bad for mentioning that. <laughs> well, I'm not sure it's an actual snake. It just kind of it was kind of long and thin. But yeah, I mean, I could try. Um, if you can talk to it, and if it can tell us if there's anything sketchy down there, and bring it out to us, that would be awesome. Mm, that's a good idea. You would be MVP of the day, and I'll buy you <laughs> drinks later. I haven't found anything so far. Um, yeah, so Silas will uh, he'll watch the, the creature for a bit. Does it look like a snake or an eel or something, or is it a fish or... Unfortunately, not catching a lot of details. It's like it's purposely trying to hide from being being seen. The one thing that does kind of strike you is that it, it does seem to be long and slender, but it's 
um, and kind of like some snakes you know that hide until they're looking to uh, uh, snatch something that, that happens to trip across them. That's similar behavior. And it is long and slender, but snakes are not the only thing that look like that. Okay. Um, well, what I'm going to do is take out some of the uh, the hemp rope that I bought I brought from the family. Uh, cut off a you know, five foot length of it, tie it to the end of the pole, and then just start touching the wiggly rope end to the end of the pool, like I'm trying to catch a fish's attention. Like a cat toy? Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. It's mostly like I'm trying to catch a cat's attention, but... Uh, but it's, it's a giant snake. It's we're the, dangling it, into the water. It's so. a, and instead of a cat, it's a giant snake. And instead of a laser pointer, it's a piece of rope on the end of a hook on the end of a, a stick. Okay. Uh, yep. I will have you make an animal handling check. In the meantime, uh, Annie, you've kind of poked around and you see uh, what looks like floating kind of on some of the, the flotsam uh, it looks like an ornate wooden box. Uh, it's It glints a little bit as you po po poke and prod at it. It'd be hard to pick up with the hook, but it is out there and does stand out. Uh, it also seems to be sitting not too far away from a strange bit of metal that at first you mistake for a uh, a mouse, but then realize it's a, it's a mouse-shaped statue of metal that seems to also glint a little bit with... Uh, with uh, uh, and there's not a lot of light in here, so um, it would probably be just a little bit from. Uh, actually, I think the only light in here is Medric at this point. Um, no, my staff. Yeah, yeah. So I, just I, I would take advice if I'm in darkness. Okay, so based on those little bit of of, uh, of lights, you see a little bit of twinkle in where the eyes of the of the metal mouse would be. It seems to be a cache of stuff that's there. Uh, and 18, nice. Uh, extending this pole out over the water with this, this bit of string, um, you are rewarded in a moment or two as you see the water churn just below uh, where this is. And lurching up out of the water, you see not exactly a snake. It's long and tubular, but at its head end more resembles a worm with a large open maw and several smaller, you might describe them as fingers wrapping around this maw, reaching forward the, to, the, uh, to the dangling bit of string. It extends out and, well, let's just see actually, it might even be able to grab onto it. Uh, let's try that. Nope, it swings and misses at the uh, at the uh, bit of rope that's there. Once out of the water, you see its head, uh, only a few feet of its head, and its head seems to extend for quite some considerable length. Uh, and along its body also you see spindly legs, more like insectoid, insectoid legs. Um, uh, it is not a snake, at least not a snake that you recognize. Yeah. Well, I will use... The uh, speak to snakes ability, just in case it works, uh, and I'll I'll uh, tell you. Um, hey there, Mister Bitey. Um, how are you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And just see if it reacts. Uh, Make another animal handling check, this time at disadvantage. Eleven. Um, as you call out to it and and speak in this, this strange tongue that, uh, Medric, you don't really recognize, um, I am imagining it somewhat like uh, like parcel tongue uh, from uh, Harry Potter. It's kind of... <laughs> all of that um, the creature does sort of breach the water and push upward with its head kind of curiously uh, looking at you and its mouth sort of pulsing open you don't see anything that would resemble 
eyes at first, uh, and then two uh, large lids kind of pull back across the top. Up to this point, only its spindly little arms around its uh, around its or digits or whatever you want to call them around its mouth have kind of moved, sensing the air. But these pull back, and it sort of uh, hauls its its upper body uh, in a curve. Uh, about uh, equal with uh, your head, so about 15 to 20 feet out of the water uh, and kind of regards you, and its head kind of tilts a little bit curiously. It hasn't made an aggressive move towards you, but you're not sure mm-hmm. what exactly yeah. the stance is like. Um, Whereabouts is the uh, the box that I see? Uh, it's right about, uh, let me see if I can click on that. If I press the right button, I can click on it. There we go. So about okay. uh, 10 feet, kind of ha- mostly in the middle. Oh, and by the way, I'll show this little fun fellow. Um, as he kind of is poking Seems his lovely. Up. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I'll say, uh, Silas will speak a bit louder and say, uh, Annie, I think I've got its attention. Uh if you guys need to go get anything, it might be a good time while it's looking at me. Okay, give me two seconds here. Uh, just reading my, my inventory. <laughs> Marta kind of calls out. Um, uh, oh, it's old Bitey. He's looking in a good form today. Um, Annie, judging by the way this stuff is floating, there's quite a lot of flotsam and jetsam there. Um, even that spar of the uh, ship just sort of seems to be sitting on top. You think that it could hold your weight if you were to go over to it. Uh, <laughs> don't slip, don't slip. <laughs> uh, I, I just need to check something right quick. Um, is your life insurance in order? Is my life insurance in order? Uh, but no, I'm looking for, um, something specific and my brain is not thinking of the word, which is horrible. <laughs> net. That is what I'm looking for. Do I have a net? <laughs> I do not. Um. You do net. I do net. <laughs> um, so, hmm. I I will ask if there are, if Marta has any anything like a net anywhere. No, I wasn't planning on doing any recovery today. So um, there are some some places, I suppose. We'd have to go quite a ways, I think, to a storeroom from here. Fair enough. Uh, then. I will give it a try with the with the the stick to try to pull it towards me. Okay. Are you going to try to pull the box or the metal mouse closer? I'm going to try the box. Okay. And what role would that be? That would be, hmm. I've got to find my list of things here. At very least, dexterity based. I'm just trying to decide if it's. Uh, I think sleight of hand. This is more of a delicate operation. Cool. Twenty-one. Holy! Hey. All right. Um, hey. Getting a hold of the box is difficult with just the hook, but you manage to kind of drag it over uh, towards the edge um, and put it right about there. So it's still kind of tumbled over some of the stuff there, and it's within arm's reach. It's going to be a bit of a tricky reach, but you can probably do it. Okay. Pulling Um, it any farther would pull it into the water, so it would probably sink. It might float. uh, I don't trust that it's going to float. Um, hmm. 
I am going to, I do have rope on me, so I'm going to try to loop some rope around it. Okay. Like, hmm. ha like throw it too far and then put, tie a knot on my end and like slip, slip a knot that way. So kind of lasso. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's call this, hmm, I think... I think an acrobatics check to get this done properly. 14. Okay. Um, you do manage to throw the rope and it lands across it. You pull it tight and it's not exactly a tight knot, but it is connected. It's more what I, what I was looking for. Um, I will try to reach it and pull it in, into my reach, basically. At the other end, Medric and Silas, you notice this creature, once fascinated just with you, kind of perk its head up as if alerted at something and start to look back over towards where Annie is. Say something to it. Say something else. Um, did you say that its head was actually close to me? Uh, it's, it, well, relatively close, yes. about uh, Still about 10 feet away. Okay. Um, okay. Things tend to like to have their heads scratched near their ears or eyes. I'm going. <clears throat> I am going to f try to find a nice, uh, not a hard ridge, but like a what well, something that looks like a soft area near a hard ridge, and give it a scritch with the pole. Okay. This is a very delicate action. I would say that is uh, definitely sleight of hand. I'm going to walk away a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I get to use my sleight of hand. Ooh. Wah, wah. Not well. Oh, well. As At least you, it didn't uh, poke in the eye. As you reach out uh, with the, uh, the metal hook on the stick and find a ridge to sort of uh, scratch on, you end up kind of hooking onto the ridge instead and tugging a little bit more strongly than you meant to. Um, the creature lets out a sort of weird uh, whistling howl and uh, turns back towards you, uh, looking kind of angry, and it moves a little bit closer. Say something right else. Up to the edge. I don't think it understands me. Um, I'm up. going to... Uh... Uh, move the uh, the hook away in like a placating manner uh, and uh, yeah just talk soothingly to it okay we're going to make this persuasion at disadvantage now uh, can I make a performance what kind of performance are you doing? A soothing one. <laughs> are you going to sing to it, or are you going to tell it a story? Sure. Uh, he'd sing a bit. He's heard that it uh, it can help. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, meanwhile, Annie, you see this commotion yeah, roughly happening at the other end, and you are reaching forward to try to grab this uh, this one is going to be another sleight of hand. Uh, sorry, acro mm hmm. that's a good question. I'm going to say acrobatics if you're just kind of trying to lean over and grab it. Uh, it would be, how how are you approaching this? Um, basically, it's like hooked. I forgot which, which camera I was using. It's like <laughs> hooked on, on the rope. I'm going to try to like reach and pull it into my hand, basically. Okay. Um, let's call that an acrobatics move. It's kind of a large, dexterous type move. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> Does the rope give me advantage? Because I'm trying makes, to balance with it? The rope makes it possible. Fair enough. Uh, as you yank on the rope, I mean, you and... said that it would be difficult to to reach it, but I I could probably reach it without it, though. That's why. 
uh, you you could, but you'd be stretching out over the water to try to grab it. Um, so it was right. either you're you are balancing precariously, or you're yanking the the rope to try to pull it towards you. You chose to do the latter, as it, as it sounded. Uh, and as you yank on the rope, it miraculously the rope holds, but the object slides only a few uh, inches, then a few more inches, and then bloop drops into the water. You still have a hold of it with the rope, but it's now underneath this murky, greenish water. Cool. The creature in front of you uh, does not look uh, soothed, Silas. Uh, instead, it uh, kind of moves really, really close to you. It opens up its maw inches from you, unless you're moving or doing anything else. I am staying very still. And kind of pushes its its face right close to yours um its large bulbous eyes on top kind of looking at you very very closely uh make uh make an animal handling check actually while this is going on i'm gonna pull out one of the uh you know how a few sessions ago i had uh, two nope. glass bottles and four clay amphoras full of oil and like explody things that were sure. meant to explode i'll just pull out one of those not, not light it yet but just, just in case okay are you trained in animal handling, Medric? I don't think so. I'm not. Okay, never mind then. Uh, but unfortunately, as it pulls closer, uh, you're forgetting whatever training you might have had, uh, Silas, uh, as it moves very, very close to you and extends a lot of these small little finger digit uh, things towards you uh, and seems to be kind of placing them down on your shoulders, extending out, not pulling its full mouth entirely uh, up to you, but sort of touching all around you like it's trying to size you up. There's a moment where you think, is it trying to figure out if it can eat you in one bite or two? But it hasn't yeah, been entirely sure. aggressive just yet. Annie, the creature moves very, very close to Silas. Work fast, Benny. Yep. yep. Uh, I'm going to try to use the rope. Uh, I have the, the stick with the hook, right? I'm going to try to like use the, the rope to guide the stick to the box and hook the stick underneath the box so it and kind of scoop it up. Okay. That sounds like a, a sleight of hand. I'll give you advantage for kind of using two tools at the same time, but it is going to be a little bit more difficult because you can't see it. Yeah. This murky water prevents that. One roll. That is two rolls. Seventeen. Okay. Hey. Um, with the second one, the first attempt, you're kind of moving the 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 uh, hook around. Turn it the wrong way. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like bang. No, it's not. I turn it around, and then you feel the weight of it taken up by the hook. And with the pull on the rope and the hook at the same time, gently and gingerly, you pull it up over the edge. And you now see the box in front of you. It looks like a very well-stained box. And in fact, even despite having been submerged and possibly even washed through water, it does not look water damaged. It looks as though it has been sealed. There is a um, what looks to be a, a crushed coral inlay around the top uh, and a, uh, a, a uh, little rose in an inlay. The box itself is very well made. It does look as though it is locked. Uh, but you now have the box. What, were you, what are you going to do, Silas? Or Medric? Yeah, what's Medric Still doing? Standing at the ready. And uh, actually, yeah, with the... Uh, let's say one of the glass bottles in my hand and my, uh, my other hand ready to cast uh, produce flame if necessary to light it up. Like, if nothing's happening, I'll cast Guidance on Silas for whatever else he's doing. Because I have no idea what he's doing, but I know it looks like it's starting to look less good. <laughs> so you can you can hold Produce Flame, or you can cast Guidance. Okay, I'll uh, cast Guidance. And Guidance, I think, is Touch. Yeah. It is? Fuck. Yep, Guidance is Touch Rain. Then I will slowly, using Half Movement... Cast guidance and use half movement again to go back here. Okay. Still holding the still holding the bottle. 
All right. Um, you do notice as it shifts a little bit, it noticed you coming in. But it's still focused on Silas, though, right? It seems to be. All right. Silas, you feel an influx, a sort of warmth pass over you uh, as you feel the, the certainty of Ignis ignite within you. What are you going to do? Well, since it's right there, I don't need to use the pole. I'm going to reach out and scratch a brow ridge. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will give you a uh, an animal handling okay. check. You'll get the uh, guidance bonus D4. I'm going to try and do it calmly. Uh, that's 13 without the D4. Uh, D4. Damn it. <laughs> Another one, so 14. As you reach out, uh, the first thing that strikes you when you hit its touch its surface, it is very, very ridged, and uh, and up close you can see very heavy, sort of thick, almost armor-like ridges that are coated in this this slime that at first you think is just a remnant of the water and the things inside it, but you get the impression no, that's actually exuded from its skin most likely. And as you stick your finger back behind the ridge and start to kind of scratch a little bit, you find your fingers kind of twiddling mostly on slime itself. But the creature does turn so that it's facing no longer towards you and moving that part closer. It I will worked. keep doing the thing. Okay. Um, and speaking kind of like, ah, that's a good Mr. Bitey. It's old Bitey, she said. Old bitey, there you go. I don't be ageist. I don't know if it's a guy either. So, okay, bitey. Uh, and the creature seems to calm a little bit. Oh, good. It looks like old bitey's eaten then. Probably would have tried to take a bite out if you hadn't. What is Annie up to? Just going to uh -huh. go for the box or go for the other thing or what? I'm going to put the box down uh, here in the square and then try to get the statue. Okay. So, uh, I will once again try to throw the, the rope so that I have that support. Okay. I'm going to start with the rope this time. Uh, that was in, I think I said. Uh, I Acrobatics, I think, for that? Acrobatics, yeah, for the rope. Okay. Toss the rope out once more. 19. The rope lands I'm nicely, the easily around the uh, the sort of head of the mouse, catching nicely under um, the ears. It's a solid grip on this now. Um, uh, Silas, you kind of notice the creature twitch a little bit when uh, the rope was, was launched, it seems very sensitive about what's here. Hmm. Oh, there's a good old, there's a good bitey. Scritch, 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 scritch. <laughs> um, it's good hard because it's got a shell and whatnot, so. Uh, okay. I'm going to clean my hands off after. Is it so, working? and I'm going to use the hook and the rope to try to guide it over to me. Okay, you will have advantage this time. Uh, Silas, you take one point of acid damage as you realize this thick slime is actually protective. Uh, and that would be sleight of hand to try to get it over to me? That's right. One. Oh, that's metered on an 18 on the 3D model. Uh, 13. 13? Yeah, you've got a good enough hook on it that it's not that hard this time to pull it over, and you manage to drag it over without knocking it into the water. Um, getting it up close, it looks like a well-made uh, metallic mouse, about eight, uh, eight inches long, not eight feet long, as I almost said, uh, eight inches long. It looks to have some sort of uh, uh, what we would recognize as a winding key in the back uh, and kind of uh, feels pretty heavy as you pick it up. Uh, a fair amount of sand and silt and even water pour out of one side of it. You look closely and notice that on the inset uh, where the eyes are, it looks like two rubies have been placed. But they're inside the sealed met uh, metallic thing. 
It looks like some sort of mechanical mouse. Looking uh, back at where you pulled all this stuff from, you feel like, like with more time, there's a lot more you could probably pull out of here. A few shipwrecks probably as that, that were succumbed to the storm, or maybe older things, things people have lost. It's hard to say exactly what all could have ended up here. Um, I mean, that. so that's the things that stood out to me at a first look. At a distance, uh, yep. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll say that's what I see that stands out to me. Do you get the feeling here. if you were able to dig through the pile itself, you'd probably find more? Um... Yeah, the, the thing is that, like, we don't know what we're looking for, right? It's true. So the, the best thing probably would be, Silas, you have uh, Detect Magic, don't you? Nope. No. I thought, I thought someone did. Nope. I have, I'm trained in Arcana, and that's the only, uh, the only thing yeah. we've got. So, because, yeah, I, I'm the one who has no clue what spell things look like. Fair enough. The one so. thing you are probably all convinced of at this point is while there is this creature here and there is the flotsam and jetsam of multiple wrecks, it quickly is becoming apparent to you that there's nothing of the kind of power you would expect to find from something which is causing the storm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we'd notice something like that. Yeah. Unless somehow this creature creates the storm as a byproduct, but mm -hmm. while it does seem scary, especially up close, it doesn't seem like it has that sort of power. According uh, to Martin, it's been here for ages, so it wouldn't. Yeah. Be no, Silas is Silas is going to gently back off, uh, and then uh, get the acid off his hands. Um, I'll pick up the box and the, the thing that I did find. Okay. I'll hmm. gently follow Silas <laughs> very quietly. The creature looks a little disappointed that you remove your hand, but also kind of curiously watching the two of you as you, you uh, uh, move around. So next time we got to bring in some fish. Um, sure. Marta kind of looks at you all and especially at, uh, at Annie. Did you find what you were looking for then? I don't know. This is what stood out to me looking out. Silas will come over and take a look at them anyways. I'll give a quick glance to whatever's by this corner as I walk by. Okay. Is that investigation or? The creature quickly vanishes from, from sight, kind of curling in among the wreckage once more. Um, you guys already did take a look at some things, and there's nothing terribly apparent upon the surface from here. Uh, Medric actually didn't. No, <laughs> I, I didn't. never rolled that. No, actually didn't. Go ahead and make an investigation roll. Well, yeah. There's no. garbage. <laughs> there's and there's more garbage stuff. over there, and there's a woman somewhere. Piles and piles and piles of stuff that looks dense and piled upon the other parts and nothing upon the surface looks all that important. Uh, everything looks broken and, and uh, wreckage. And every once in a while, you do see the creature kind of swimming amongst it and realizing that it seems to be of making its home inside. Um, I will go around the corner here and I'd like to try to pick the lock of the chest. Okay. It's it's uh, yeah. surprisingly not corroded all that badly, uh, made from some sort of uh, proper metal, and there's a little uh, little covering over the keyhole. Go ahead and get, make a uh, lock picking roll. Thieves tools, I guess it would be. Fourteen. Fourteen. It opens pretty readily. It wasn't a, a very sophisticated lock. It was meant for keeping 
casual people out. Uh, inside, you do find that the, while the the box was closed pretty firmly, some of the liquid did seep in over time, making the, the interiors a little bit messed. It looks as though the in, the interior of the box once had a very nice felt uh, felt interior. That's kind of stained a bit now, but the box itself still in pretty good shape. Uh, good hinges, a solid lock. You didn't have to break it. Inside, though, you find two necklaces, um, one of which is a, a necklace of semi-precious stones with an ivory relief of a man's head at the very end of it. Uh, it looks like a woman's necklace, and the man's head is probably uh, someone who was beloved to that person. It's in good shape. Probably go for some decent uh, coin. The other is a uh, simple... Uh, well, relatively simple rope, if you will, uh, tied around a, a metal charm. Uh, it looks as though it's about um, about two inches across a round circle with the, a growling lion's head on it. Uh, and looks like it's in, in remarkably good shape. It shines a little bit, even in the small amount of light that's here. Cool. Uh, I'll just leave them in, in the thing, close it up again. So okay. it's not, doesn't look like it would be Soros when stuff I didn't think with the description of the box it would be, but might as well check. And then. It, the only, the only <laughs> marking on the outside is the sort of inlay of uh, crushed coral, which is of a, of a rose. Uh, it would be kind of pale white and blue based on the, the coral that's used. But again, a very nice box. Yeah. Uh, the box itself is probably about, uh, you know, what did I say? About almost a, probably a foot long, uh, about uh, three inches deep, a couple of inches high. Uh, and yeah, so I'll, I'll close it up. I'll, and I'll say, yeah. Unless this, there's anything else, this is all I could really see. Well, you never know what you're going to find in there. I found suits of armor with the people still wearing them. They weren't much better for wear, though. Hmm. Um, I will actually ask about Sir Oswin's stuff, like, if, if there was any... Um, anything that would fit what I think he would have, like his his chest of stuff. Well, she tells you I haven't been been uh, spelunking for things in a while myself, but I can ask some of the others who might have found some things. Uh, a friend of mine, his chest fell off one of the boats. You see, and uh, there are some there's some important paperwork. Uh, that shouldn't end up in the wrong hands. I shall you ask know, around. Titles and things. Well, I'm sorry this wasn't what you were looking for. It's weird that a robot keeps answering me. That's what it sounds like. Um, but she will lead you around to another spot. Um, Sure. Just over here, perhaps. I mean, it might be another spot for you to take a look at. If I knew what you were looking for, it would help us all, but since you're not, I'll take you on the grand tour. Oh, believe me, if, if we knew what we were looking for, that would help a lot too, yeah. <laughs> and she leads you down... I'll, I'll put the, the two things in my bag. Okay. The uh, the metal mouse is still sort of seeping water and sand. And you probably shake it off a little bit. Yeah. Um, it rattles on the inside. Just revealing a few areas here that you'd probably be able to see from there.
And she leads you around, this time kind of coming down and up to cross this particular little bridge right here. Then across. And all three of you can make insight checks. You pass by a few of the lanterns that are there right now as well. Wow. wow. You guys are, are, are on, the mo on the moment, kind of noticing. Uh, What's you notice, that door? <laughs> uh, you notice as she crosses this bridge, where Medrick happens to be standing right now, um, she very deliberately turns right. You get the impression that sort of the, she thought about turning left, uh, but then very deliberately and with a, a bit more of a, a stronger stride than you're used to from her, deliberately turns right and moves down in this direction. And then leads. Oh, that's sure what's behind that door. Um, oh, just more supplies. Do you mind if we open it? You're you're muted, Pat. Yeah, we did say before that we were checking all of the supply closets. Okay. Um, she uh, she sighs, kind of backing up a few steps, a few paces, and unlocks each of those doors. Um, the first one that you have there, uh, just to the right of that, um, looks like boxes and crates. You can see that some of the boxes are in crates are empty. Some of them look like they've been uh, filled up with uh, uh, bits and bobs. You get the impression that some of that might have been stuff that was salvaged. Um, but uh, she kind of points out, like, there's some, there's a coil of rope there. There's um, some more of the uh, the hooks for the ends of those, those pikes uh, and a few extra pikes that are there as well that are not connected. Uh, basically, they could be used as repairs. There's a few uh, shovels, some picks. That sort of thing. And the other, there's just a couple of boxes. Um, it looks like uh, they contain, um, uh, uh, what am I going to try to say? Uh, the metallic bits um, used to repair uh, doors, used to repair uh, grates and that sort of thing. Nothing particularly spectacular in those doors. Or in those okay. But none of the boxes are like locked, right? Uh, some of them are nailed shut. Hey, Silas, uh, that device we're looking for, how big do you think it would be? Could it be, like, hidden into clutter? At a guess, it's probably something like a statuette or a totem of some sort. I mean, technically, it could be as small as a ring, I guess. But it's, I mean, that, it'd have to be really powerful for that. It's probably something more like a... I don't know, like a small statuette. I mean, that's all I can think of. Uh, or maybe like a crystal or something, but I don't think it would be tiny. But it um, would be small enough to fit in the box. Possibly. Uh, Silas will check the boxes just to see if if they look like they've been sitting there a long time or if they've been opened sometime recently, like is there any damage to the wood, like a crowbar prying them open or something? Okay. Um, make yeah, a, I'll look at the other ones too. Okay. Each of you make an investigation roll. We'll just kind of arbitrarily divide you up between the two spaces so I know where you are. Oh. <laughs> I got distracted by the pikes on the ground, I guess. <laughs> Uh, Silas, as you're looking at these boxes, it looks as though they're fairly new boxes, actually. Uh, one of them is uh, is marked, uh, um, basically, uh, repair supplies, kind of scrawled across the outside. They don't. They look like they're fairly new wood. They're they're uh, they're in good shape. They're still sealed pretty tightly tightly shut. They don't show any yeah. signs of having been opened recently. Um, Medrick, yeah. uh, as you're 
Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just, okay. He's not going to open them or anything. Okay. Medrick, as you're poking around in this room and, and uh, noticing, and some of these, these boxes, they're, you know, filled with straw, kind of carrying uh, what looks like more clay jugs, and, and which is kind of weird, but uh, Marta explains that, uh, well, we don't use all the oil at once. Sometimes we use a bit of oil here, a bit of p pine tar here and there. Um, and as you step around the room, um, your feet get wet, which you find kind of strange. Mm-hmm. In a sealed room. Uh, how come the floor is wet? I thought this was sealed. And Marta kind of looks a little bit confused. No, no, these rooms are very sealed. But as I'll you... point at the wet spot on the floor. <laughs> and as you, you point at it, you, you realize that it's a little bit deeper towards the back of this room. And... You kind of move a couple of the boxes out of the way and notice there's a little bit of water sort of seeping through the, the interior wall of the back of this room. Uh, is that supposed to happen? I'll ask Marta. Marta kind of trundles in. No, no, not at all. Well, there's nothing beyond there but solid stone. These walls are just made here so we can hang things off of. Simple walls, not meant to be anything fancy. But there shouldn't be water Could coming from it. that side. Maybe it's a secret door. Hey, Annie. I mean, Annie's good at finding secret doors. I, I, I can take a look at it. Okay. Annie, with uh, investigation roll, please. As you probe around the door, and, or probe around the wall, then, Annie... Um, first of all, it becomes very apparent. This is a solid poured concrete wall meant to keep in whatever dirt's on the other side. Uh, there's no door here as such, but you do find that at the bottom of the wall, it does look as though water has built up on the other side of this uh, and started to wear away at the bottom part, pushing out a little bit of stones here and there, just enough. And as water is wont to do, it continues to kind of carve out space. You get the impression, as you're looking at it, that... It's not continuous water. There's nothing flowing out of it right now. But if the ent ent entire space gets periodically flooded outside and the tide rises, the water would come in from the other side of this. So it suggests there's something on the other side, but no door right here. Hmm. Well, I need to know what's on the other side of this wall. Yeah, same. Uh, Silas comes uh, over, stop, hammer time, and pull, uh, holds out the sledgehammer. No, 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 no. You can't go breaking down the walls in here. It's just not done. Well, can uh, you take us to the other side? But it can be fixed, though, right? Well, of course we can fix it, but I'd rather have less oh. to fix. There might be something on the other side. B before stuff gets smashed, I'll take my crowbar and try to shimmy it in the hole. Okay. It, it is big enough just to sort of jam the crowbar in, so there is a fairly substantial hole there. It's a little rough. Okay. Like, and to, like, shimmy it in, like, scooch stuff, see if I can see anything. It's basically you can barely fit the, the crowbar in the hole, and you feel kind of soft dirt on the other side. There's no light on the other side. Okay. Uh, well, is this a narrow... Does this turn off, like, into the... Is there a room behind this, is what my brain is trying to say, in a way that makes sense. <laughs> Well, Words Marta, are hard. <laughs> Marta kind of shakes her head. Well, there shouldn't be nothing but dirt behind, as far as I know. Hmm. Not for this block, anyway. Although there are other bill, other spaces down here. Let's check those. Maybe there's maybe someone's tunneling in or something. If not, we can come back here and see. How far we can get. 
Uh -huh. Is there anything underneath the the ch the chest over here? Because he was looking specifically at like the seal of the chest. The uh, the other yeah, room. Yeah, there were new boxes. Uh, you kind of shift them aside. Doesn't seem to be anything there. There's a little bit of sign that there was actually you'd find a dead mouse. It must have gotten trapped in here last time the door was closed, or maybe a long time ago, uh, and then get stuck in there. Cool. Um. I'm uh, on here, Mark, that there. Put some, some marking that this is of interest. Yep. yep. Um, so, and I'll flat out ask, and what's that way? going to the way that she kind of avoided. Oh, just more time. You seem to want to avoid that way. No, just didn't think it would be of interest. You can make an insight check. Oh, yeah. Both of us? <laughs> Everybody? Um. Yeah, I guess you're all kind of there. Ah oh, man. <laughs> Fuck sakes. Um, Annie, you're you're picking up on on a little bit, a little bit of reticence, a little bit almost of embarrassment, a little bit of of uh, concern. Is there something wrong that way? No, no, no. I mean, not aside from what might be wrong anywhere down here. Not that I expect us to find any of those uh, crab to push us anytime soon, or anything else, really. Oh, that's you seem to be worried about something. I don't want to waste your time. It's not a waste of our time. We're down here anyway. But if you don't know what we're looking for, and if we don't know what we're looking for, then it could be that way. How would we know? Until we get there. off that way. He's going to peek around the corner. Okay. Just a second here as I catch up. Silas, wait. I don't follow him. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're already wandering around without knowing what we're looking for. Um, yeah, and now we found out that this room is not perfectly sealed. It just looks like a uh, another, another uh, I was going to say hallway. I guess that's the right term in this case. Are you are you charging on ahead? Marta kind of sighs and starts walking in that direction, but she's a lot slower than you are. Um, well, he's not charging forward, but uh, if she's not as against to stop, then yeah, he'll he'll keep going. Okay. But, uh, basically, he'll just check around the corner and then decide if anything looks interesting enough to keep walking. Okay. As you reach that corner, you're probably going to decide there's something interesting. Uh, just a second here, as I. Trying to make sure this gets revealed properly. As there are two things that kind of, of are of interest. Uh, one at the very end of this. Oops, I got to move over so everybody else can see what's going on here. Um, you do see a, a set of broad stairwell or a stairs going upward. Uh, it looks like one of the entrances and exits that come to this this place, uh, probably leading up to something similar as what you'd come in, which was the. Uh, the sort of graded off uh, little buildings that they have, which are meant to go into the sewers. Across from here, however, uh, is a, a very uh, different style of door um, over on the other side. Let me just see if I can highlight that a little bit. Uh, it looks like it's been reinforced. It's made of, uh, of uh, what looks like uh, stone placed over probably metal. There are uh, rods that seem to go through and, and hold it there. It's about uh, 10 feet tall as a door, which makes it bigger again, uh, and seems to have a very uh, large, elaborate-looking lock on it. Hmm. And Marta's slowly catching up to you, I presume. Uh, yeah, Silas will just wait there. Okay. Marta, what's that door for? Well, it's 
sort of a private residence, I guess you might say, a workshop. I didn't know if we would be seeing one of the residents or not. They can sometimes be a little frightening to outsiders. But I assure you he's harmless. I don't have a key for that. We've seen some shit. It's probably fine. I don't have a key for that. It's it's private. Well, we could just knock. How close are we to the market square under here? Um, make a survival roll. Or are you asking Marta? <laughs> uh, well, he is trying to think of it himself, but he will ask Marta as well. Okay. 11. Yeah, you're getting turned around in here too many times to really be able to, to pick out exactly which direction things are in at the moment. Um, uh, Marta's uh, suggesting, well, that goes up to one of the places not far from the market. Is it? Well, he'll, since none of the maps was in strictly northern anyways, right? Uh, he'll ask if it leads up to the side that we were uh, the side of the market square that we were thinking it was on thinking the the uh the center was at um oh right um it it is on that side yes not far from here i think above would be uh, a restaurant if i remember correctly i've never eaten there myself it smells very good their trash is the best smelling that comes around then, uh, so, th so this is near the spot we're looking for. Well, that can't uh, be it, though. I described the grate that had the missing lock on it. Um, that would correspond roughly to this area. Unless you okay. went upstairs, you wouldn't be able to verify if that's the right one. Yeah. Do you uh, know who lives here, Marta? And she looks a little bit embarrassed, if you will. I do. I'm not supposed to say, though. It is to be kept private. If we say we won't tell anybody, can you tell us? Well, you're nice and all, dear, but I have my um, professional pride to keep in mind. And she winks at you. And we have the safety of this town to keep in mind. I can't believe it has anything to do with that. I'm afraid we must insist. Whoever it is might be home. We can just knock on the door and they'll answer. You can make a persuasion check if you want to try to, to uh, make your argument per persuasive. I, I would like to do that, yes. So we, we, while, while they're doing that, Silas goes, you know, he's hey. right. He goes and knocks on the door. Okay. Hey, natural 20. Nice. And a 23, which is nicer. Wow. You guys are very persuasive. Uh, I just have to look something up real quick here. I'm not sure why I'm not finding it. And then I realize I have find. It's like a whole thing and everything. We right. we have the safety of this town, which includes you and whoever's living there. If you say they're a decent fellow, then they had nothing to do with it. We can confirm that and then just go on our merry way. And if they are the cause of it, they're not a decent fellow. Um, you go over and, and knock heavily on the door. You get mm -hmm. the impression that nothing could be heard through this door. It is like it is like knocking on a wall. Uh, extraordinarily thick, heavy, heavy, heavy door, reinforced. I look for a knocker. Uh, there's nothing except maybe the lock itself. <laughs> That's about it. Um, he's such a nice man. He's very new here, but he's doing very good things. I just can't imagine that he's anything to do with this. And his friend is so kind. People don't get a chance to really know him all that well. 
And to be honest, I don't know if I do either, but I can see it in his eyes. Right. Silas will yell back, is it Marigold? That's what I was going to ask. Is it Dr. Marigold and his, uh, friend? Dolver, yes. And she looks a little embarrassed that you sort of, that she kind of gave it away. Dolver is a, is a kind soul. People look at him strangely because he's so, so changed by his experience. But I can tell inside he's, he's pure dwarf. And Marigold is a delightful sort. He wants to keep his privacy, so we keep his privacy. Oh. We've met him before. Like Marigold actually very wouldn't be. I'm sure he wouldn't mind us being inside at all. And Silas starts to look at the lock. Okay. It's very, very heavily reinforced, uh, partially built into the door itself. Um, it looks as though the stone was actually molded around the, the lock. Neat. Um, I think where we know it's Marigold, we should probably just ask him to go in. Yeah. Um, however, does the captain know people live down here that don't work down here? There have been certain private arrangements. This is one of the oldest. This is a building that's known. It's been here for a long time. The captain knows the building is here, or rather knows that it was. At least from the records he should know. It's the old jails, the extended jails. I see. Well, when we're done here, we can go ask him. We should continue trying to find the way behind that other room. Yeah. So I'm assuming uh, the lock on that entrance going up the stairs, Mary Gold has the key. I mean, if he lives down here. Are you asking Marta? Yeah. He would have his own. Dolver, too. It's convenient for Dolver when he needs to retrieve things. Those who've passed. Mm -hmm. well, well, we have things to talk about with Dr. Marigold anyway. Not bad things, I assure you. So yeah, we can probably catch up with him later and ask him about... We, could, we can ask him for a tour. I mean, he gave us a tour of his other workshop, which smelled about about like this one. This could be that place, actually. Oh uh, yeah. Um. So from here, there's no door into this area. No door uh, into oh into the back area. No. Yeah. The only thing you see is a singular light. Uh, on the other side of the uh, of the stretch, yeah, but no door there. Uh, then I'll make my way to that door. What door? No. There's no door there. Just the light. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll go check the light because we were told that. Mm. There's a door at every light. Yep. Okay. Um, it was uh, what investigation roll, I think. Yeah. Nope. Oof. You're starting to believe that they didn't. They must have put these lights up in random places. Nope. Uh, cause yeah, like, she's convinced that there's something there, uh, because there well, was something uh, there and Silas will help her. You can take another roll then, uh, with advantage cause Silas is looking with you. 
or Silas could roll with it. Yeah, so, Silas or, can sorry. make his own roll. Silas, yeah, you did roll really badly on that. Um, but Silas, uh, trusting Annie's instincts, kind of takes a look at it. No, 19. And with your uh, with your staff, you kind of tap a little bit at it, um, just kind mm-hmm. of tracing a little bit, um, and some some mud falls off the wall. And as you sort of trace a little bit along, you get the impression that they that someone had pushed mud and tried to kind of conceal the the shapes in the wall, even though the light themselves itself doesn't really reveal as much. Um, and once more, some things fall away. And as you trace through uh, again, Annie, you're recognizing now those same sort of curving shapes. But it's different this time. It's as though the curved shapes were scratched and and broken and deliberately tried to be uh, destroyed. And then later on, this other mud and, and other things were applied to the to the wall to make it completely disappear. But you're convinced now that you were right. Your instincts were right, even if your initial vision wasn't. There appears to be a door here. Hmm. Yeah, he's doing, doing that. There's a door at every lantern. Oh, a lantern yeah. at every door. It was just a saying, dear. Well, so far it's been true. <laughs> Yeah. Are you going to try to open it? I, I'll, I'll take a crack at it. For a moment there, I thought you were going to say, "I'm just going to walk away." Uh, like Silas will assist. Uh, Mendrick, could you do that thing that makes you warm and good? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I'll cast guidance on Annie. <laughs> okay. A little tap on the shoulder. Spread of warmth. Fire within. The power of Vignus is with you. Determination. So some lock picking action? That's exactly it. Okay. Silas will help with sleight of hand. You do have advantage on this roll and guidance. Yes. Uh, just things are in my way. <laughs> <laughs> Damn clutter. Holy Dang. Woo. I'm still going to roll the D4 because why not? 30. 30. Nice. <laughs> you Ooh, that the other natural part. 30. <laughs> That's got to be like the highest roll so far in this campaign. Yeah. Yes. I, I think in the other one too. Yeah, I don't uh, think anyone's rolled a 30. I think I, no, I think there was some sort of thing that close, but that's getting, that's getting right, up there. Well, I'm pretty yeah, sure it was back with his like plus 14 or kind of. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably. But at this level, that's extraordinarily impressive. And as you yeah. kind of move your, your your hands around the door, a couple of things become apparent to you. One, uh, the locking me- mechanism is pretty much the same as there was in the temple. At least it was originally. Uh, this one has been deliberately sort of broken and and uh, and attempted to be interfered with. You some places you would normally put your fingers inside the the uh, the, the carvings to press on the inside. The the entire space inside has been broken apart. But in fact, it makes it easier because you find that some of the mechanism itself is also broken. Uh, almost as though, because you rolled so well, I have to give you this impression. Because holy moly, that's a great roll. Uh, almost as though uh, it was blasted by continual force of power, like uh, magic of some kind or uh, a force of lashing of water. But th- this place regularly gets flooded. Normal water could not have done that. And behind, and you, as you open it up, you do reveal there is, in fact, a hallway that extends quite some distance. You might even estimate going the entire way the, uh, across. I have made this door my bitch. <laughs> in fact, I will uh, say, if you do encounter a door like this again, I'll automatically give you advantage to I'll, I'll try to unlock it, because that was just <laughs> pretty spectacular. Uh, Silas looks back at Marda and says, did you not know this was here? She looks a little bit, a little bit ashamed. No, finding doors that aren't there, or at least don't appear to be there, well, that's not something I've ever tried to do, I suppose. I just took it as granted that when they were building, they put torches where needed. I th- honestly thought torch, a door at every torch was just, a, just an old saying to keep you guided. 
now I'm, I'm a little worried there are more spaces like this down here. How long have you been working here? My whole <laughs> life. I was born practically in these in this place. I've and the door was lost before then. Hmm. Do 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 do. <laughs> As you trundle down the down the hallway and reach a whoops, I gotta grab the. Okay, he'll peek right in the corner. Uh, it reveals okay. another hallway. There are apparently no traps. <laughs> Murder, are you coming? Marta looks a little bit uh, skeptical, but kind of moves to the edge and follows <laughs> along behind. Huh, there's a door and two lanterns. Does that mean there's supposed to be a second door? And as you step to that point, this door is ajar. Oh, har, har, har. I can break a jar easy. Uh, as you can see, the door itself was sort of half smashed in. Revealing the contents of what looks like some sort of living quarters, but they've been torn apart and shredded a long time ago. It looks as though they're slightly damp as well, um, although there's no water upon the upon the uh, ground. Um, it looks they look very very old and decayed. There's spider webs over everything. Mouse droppings can be seen here and there. Huh. And on the other wall, there is indeed already visible. Uh, another door on the far end. Okay. Um, I couldn't quite see it. Yeah, I didn't have the reveal quite as close as I wanted to. Um, this one appears to be uh, a solid door, but it too seems to have been battered and broken. Um, you recall from the temple, though, that most of the doors once closed would lock themselves again, and this one appears to have locked itself again. I won't belabor the point because I've already given you advantage and you made an incredible role in the previous one. I'm just going to hold over for this one anyway. But Annie, without much effort, you can you can again open up this door. Once more, though, this one seems to have been been uh, beaten at. Probably whoever came through here before was able to kind of force the door half, force the door open, half pick it, which means they were they were in quite a bit of a, of a hurry or agitated. Opening that door reveals a rather large space. Large stone pillars, once carved, have been knocked over. And the, the carvings on them beaten to nothing more than practically smooth stone. Nothing recognizable at all. Uh, rubble is piled up around the room. The remnants of whatever furniture or things had been in here. Nothing more than scraps. Some burned uh, ancient fabrics. Signs of blast marks on the wall. And ever so much uh, of a... Uh, of a sign of a massive battle here. No bones, no bodies, nothing of any living being ever here, except for this strange symbol that seems carved into the floor, filled in with what looks like coral or crystal or something. It still sparkles. Uh, water flows in ever so slightly from two, um, two uh, uh, graded covered uh, holes in the floor. That as you get closer, Silas, remind you somewhat of the openings that covered the well as well. And as you get closer, you can detect that this seems to be fresh water. Um, you can see that along the, uh, I didn't quite put it on this map the way I meant to, but uh, the water that's spreading out from the far left one is actually spreading up along the wall here. Probably what seeped through and actually carved through to the room on the other side. In the center of the symbol... There is a deep hole into which much of the water is actually flowing. And as you walk in, you actually realize the entire floor is, is slanted slightly so that water would flow into the center of the circle. But instead of the center of the circle, instead of the floor, there is a jagged hole, dark and wide, almost 10 feet across. Well, about 8 feet, really. Um, is Marta following us? Marta is cautiously kind of looking at everything, and she's kind of spending some time in the other room, just sort of looking through, trying to figure out who was here. She hasn't entered this room yet. Hey, Madrid, can you drop a light down there? Yeah. So I'll pick up a pebble, cast light, and just drop it down the hole. And I'll try to listen for, like, how long it takes to hit the ground, too. Okay. 
Are you throwing it from a distance, like from across where you are, or walking up to it and dropping it again? What's it look like? I'm walking up to it cautiously and dropping it in. <laughs> okay. As you get closer to the hole, you feel wind rushing by you. It gets stronger and stronger as you move closer to the hole. And yeah, you, can so hear, the next hole. you can hear a distant sort of sound of, of almost sounds like a storm. And the air is, is warming as it gets closer to this hole. You draw, you cast light on a pebble and throw it in. It drops down about what looks like five feet, but already grows dim. And you can hear it kind of bouncing tuk, 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 and then bounces out of sight as it rounds a corner once you get inside. Huh. As you uh, as the light passes through, also you would see it reflecting off of the sides of the hole. Um, they seem smooth and little sparkles of blue along along the sides of them. Um, I believe you're trained in <coughs> Arcana, uh, Silas. Am I right? Yep. Yeah. Um, you actually n feel that the the sparkles indicate a sort of magical containment in this hole. There's nothing natural about this. Huh. Uh, but how far down could Silas see before the rock went out of... Uh... About five feet. The hole is already sliding, uh, sloping a little bit at the top and then seems to take a sharp turn uh, to what effectively would be the north on this map around then. Uh, a sharp... Well, hmm. actually, sorry, more of a gradual turn. It's like a tube that's turning. Martel Trundle, oh. Marta Trundle. So it's like a water slide to nowhere. No. <laughs> to the unknown. You hop in? Yes. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, please make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, my God. <laughs> As Marta kind of walks in and sees Silas kind of go, whoop. Hey. All right. Silas. It's only five feet down. Uh, you do take six points of bludgeoning damage as you kind of uh, end up swirling around in the hole as as it go down. Um, Ow! Okay. <laughs> uh, Not straight as, down. As soon you hear him kind of speaking, and you hear this, Ow! Ooh! And then nothing. Silas, from behind you, you start to hear, uh, you hear the rest of them kind of saying something. You hear Marta kind of coming into the room, and then silence is devoured behind you. What are the rest of you doing? Marta's coming into the room. She's wide-eyed and looking around. You get the impression as she passes by you, Annie, that this is all of a wonder to her and a little bit, a little bit earth-shattering in a way because she's known these places for her entire life and this is something she's never seen before. I think this place might be dangerous. What happened here? It all looks like a big... Where did he go? <laughs> he jumped down the hole uh, apparently I hope he's not dead we're probably going to go after him and uh, I'll look down at the symbol do I recognize that at all are you trained in arcane nope uh, nope no, it's I figured like if it was a religious thing it's uh, actually you are trained in religion make a religion roll yeah. for me please that is plus where is it Thirteen. Although you're not sure of the specific religious significance of this particular thing, part of the design does remind you of the temple that you'd found before and some of the, the iconography you'd seen on the walls. And looking around, the destruction is similar too. The idea yeah. of it being total destruction, the idea of it being complete removal of whatever was here. And that also makes you rem remind you a little bit of Catherine's mission. Right. We're going into the thing that should be forgotten. Yep. Because of uh, Silas. <laughs> Marta, I'm going to... Uh, I, I need to let Marta out the other door. Um, I... If we're not out, let someone know where we are. Um, but I, I don't think you should come with us. I think I agree, but... This place will be flooded not too long from now. Yep. This There's room seems to be sealed. 
this room seems fairly sealed, but also there's the stairs right there. Uh, I just mean that we may not be able to come after you for quite some time. Yup. We might be a while. Be safe. This is all very strange to me. Me too. We'll, we'll do what we can. Uh, just imagine we, what, what Dr. Marigold would think if he knew this was beside his own uh, space. Yeah. Uh, I would suggest maybe not talking to anybody about this quite yet. Not until we get back, anyway. Not until we get back and have more information. Unless you don't get back, and then I'll make sure to go to the, the Reeve, I think. Do they do they call the Captain the Reeve here? That's one of the titles. Okay. Okay. Haven't heard that title since Vader, so. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> I forgot what title I had used. I didn't. I didn't think I'd said sheriff, but Reeve would Captain. be one of his formal titles. I guess he's just called Captain Varendel by most, but. Yeah. Uh, yes, definitely. If anything happens, let the captain know. Um, I will. Stay safe, dear. We'll, we'll do our best, and I get the doors, let her out. Okay. Um, she's actually... Before we head down... Keep going. Uh, probably going to head out the door by the sh by the stairs. You think she might even go now? Yeah. So it's been a couple of heartbeats. Silas still finds himself traveling in the hole. What are the rest of you doing? How long are you going to wait? Gonna, I'm just going to give a quick look through the uh, room that was trashed to make sure we can, like, just to see if there's any clues. Yep. So half an hour, an hour? Uh, actually, yeah, let's go after Silas right now, just in case he lands, like, in the pile of something. We can always come back to the other room, I guess. Yep. Yep. Silas kind of forced her hands there. <laughs> Hey, he said it was five feet down. <laughs> no, he didn't. I, I said I, I lost sight of the pebble after it was five feet. Yeah, no, Mark, five Mark feet said down. it was five feet down. The first step, yes. And then it bends. Oh. And then how long it goes from there, you don't know, because you lose sight and even hearing of the, the rock up to that point. Um, well, I'll uh, gently hang down from the first five feet so I don't like get the initial crash. And then be a good idea. <laughs> I let myself go. Make sure I'm sitting up. <laughs> okay. Um, you find, as uh, as Silas did, that the sides are remarkably smooth. Like they have no surface really other than this this sort of bubbly uh, feeling, and there's nowhere to grab any grip. <coughs> Make a dexterity saving throw with advantage because yeah, you didn't leap definite. into the hole. Uh, did you say at advantage? At advantage, yes. Okay. Wow. Well, on the 12. I mean... The best he rolled was a 13, so sorry. Um, wow. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a D6. Yeah. It's not a 6. I'm not rolling just 6. Uh, okay. but, but as you oh. two also find yourself bouncing around, and what's weird for both of you is you find yourself corkscrewing around the hole, up and down, become merely suggestions, and every once in a while, the hole just goes straight on down, and you find yourself plummeting and then finding another bend, and suddenly you might feel like you're moving upward and around, and it's very strange. We out. That's six damage. You said Wee, ow. six damage. Yeah, bludgeoning. Damn it, Andy. I have fifty feet of rope. I'm uh, mm. tying my rope onto this pillar. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm going to not tie it to myself, but I'm going to hold on to it. Okay. Before I try to go into the hole, I'll oh. climb down. <laughs> All right, uh, you climb down into the hole and find yourself at that bend. You find the walls are extraordinarily slippery and you cannot find any way to grasp on. The rope, however, allows you to lower yourself down hand over hand to the bend and then sort of just sort of slide along and along and along and along. And what do you do when you get to the end of the 50 feet of rope? Um... I will hold on for a second. <laughs> uh, I will take, uh, hold, holding on with one hand, take vice out uh, as a light source to see what I can see from there. Mostly what you see is more tunnel. 
the uh, light seems to bounce off the walls and you can see just seething just below the surface is is some sort of magical essence that seems to sparkle and twist uh, as you take a moment to kind of examine it closely it almost looks like water weirdly enough almost crystalline though in nature frozen in position and yet slowly moving cool i will let go of the rope all right everybody else go down Make it water sliding with a dagger seems more dangerous than running with scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, you you discover the, the the thrill ride that's there. Please make a dexterity saving throw. You do get to make it with advantage. Dexterity saving throw. Dexterity no damage whatsoever as you find your way to kind of lean up and when the, when the when the world seems to turn and twist upside down uh you find a way to to kind of roll with it until you find yourself plummeting and then suddenly uh we'll do this in the in a different sort of description but uh suddenly you plummet upwards as do all of you and then the column is filled with water for you, Silas, this presents no particular problem, but you do detect that the water is clear and pure and refreshing. For you, Medric, the water is cold and oppressive and unwelcoming. And for you, Annie, it is like falling into the sea, but the water is fresh and you hold your breath. I'm going to move you to the other map. You know, let's see if you can see anything. Probably not yet. Yep. Yep. Well, you brought, you guys can because you have lights. All right. Uh, but I don't know if I... I do not. So I'm going to do a little reveal here as you kind of pop out of... Uh, let me see if that's actually working. Hmm. Well, it's not truly important that I have to hide everything from you, but I thought it would be nice to have a dramatic reveal. Um, can you see anything, uh, Annie? Like as a play as a player? Yeah. Like my screen, yeah. You can. I, I see a circle and some like flakies. Okay, I think I have to. The pro... <laughs> the problem being. Uh, is that the third person view that I have doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal for the players and you guys will see it as well. Again, it's not that important as a reveal, but uh, people at home can see the, the setup of this map. Um, and again, I don't know how far you guys can see, but we can see all the lit area. Okay. We can see like a thing in the middle and like four other things with water and like two things that point at each thing. Okay. That's a lot of things. That's appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let me, let me describe um, what this is. As you find yourself jetting upward out of a pool of water and then kind of landing beside the pool. Um, first Silas, but followed only a few seconds uh, by Medric and only a few seconds by Annie, despite the fact that you know you each delayed. Um, before following the other. Um, Silas assumes they jumped right in after him. Probably, yeah. We did, really. Um, for you, Silas, with your arcane knowledge, the, the feeling that you get is not so much that you travel through just a physical tunnel or physical water, but you get the feeling that you traveled through um, uh, almost an arcane gateway of some kind. Uh, and that up and down were only relative suggestions for a brief period of time as you travel through this strange gateway. Um, as you travel up through the water and stand up, you discover the water is only a few inches deep until suddenly emerging behind you is Medric, <coughs> who similar, similarly comes out and finds that the ground is solid beneath him. And then thirdly, Annie, as you step away, uh, is revealed coming out. Do I feel that we're in the same... Uh plane i mean what does that really feel like there's nothing well does it feel like we sh we were sent to another plane or just 
inverted but in the same area it's difficult to say um but you get the impression that that's a possibility the 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 transition through the water felt unlike just moving through water there was something magical and something strange about it as though this was somehow not entirely a different plane or existence but maybe somehow a special state or a special space somehow connected to the plane okay. and certainly when you come through up resumes its normal place as does down and left and sideways um, but the space you came through does not seem to be there anymore a one-way transition in the center of this cavernous space which seems to to uh, be lost in the darkness above you um, for you, uh, Silas, with your dark vision, you can just barely make out the tip of what looks like a dome-like dome area um, made of stone, as is the wall behind you, all perfectly placed. In fact, immaculately placed. You would, uh, you would swear that the, the design of the stone itself it was done as perfect as lines can be, even though the room itself has a slight curve to it. In the center of the room, there are um, uh, walls, partial walls that have been erected. Uh, moss grows around the edges of them, and you can see some, some ferns and some other grasses growing as if this place was neglected. And, and here, whatever small motes of life grew in what they could. Water seeps out through those walls uh, out uh, in a strange sort of almost regular pattern to um, a, from where you can see... Um, what look like cauldrons that seem to be uh, made of stone um, and the water seems to bubble and you at first think the water is flowing towards the stones but actually coming out of these cauldrons and joining the water which flows now you realize towards the center. Inside is a flashing of light as something is moving and seen through the partially destroyed or partially carved out walls that are in the center. It kind of thrums, and the sound itself sort of starts to come into your presence as well. Thum, 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 as something moving, circling, and, and uh, spinning in the very center of all of this. As you sit there for a moment, you start to make out a sort of diamond which appears, and then a smaller diamond which appears. And then you suddenly sort of resolve that into two separate diamonds, hollow on the inside, so diamond frames that are spinning in opposite directions in, inside uh, this space in the center. Light is streaming out from it as well. You also see two pillars nearby that have uh, numerous crystals attached to the sides that seem to, to sparkle and glitter. And bright lights extend out and, and bathe over these cauldrons of water for the moment there is no other sound and no other movement what would you like to do this strange vision in front of you hmm. um silas still has his staff lit right yeah cool oh, i will add you as emitting light what kind of light is that uh, it's, I think, bright to 20 feet, dim for another 20. Okay. That should make things a little easier for people to see. Does that make it easier for Annie to see? I, I can now see things, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, I can see it was Medrick's little circle? Yeah, because he glows slightly in the dark. Yeah. Actually, as do uh, you. Do you have your light on? Hmm? Um, unless I'm in uh, in complete darkness, uh, it doesn't emit light. It has a slight glow. Oh, right. So that won't be represented there. Okay, so we're in a big dome? That's what it appears to be, yes. Okay. And is, is this the water we came out of? Yes. Okay. But if we go into it now, it just looks like it's a few inches deep. That's right. Okay. Uh, I'll tell them that I think we're in a demi plane. Um, I don't know. We were looking at stuff and you suddenly jumped in the hole. Well, it looks like it was only five feet deep. I thought it would just be like a, a floor underneath. I wasn't expecting this. A plane underneath, I mean, of course. <laughs> 
Can we go back through that puddle? No. No, there must be another way out. This... I... I think this is a hidden temple. I'll start moving around. As you move closer and you can kind of see through some of the gaps in the, uh, in the wall in front of you, um, you see in the center now of this double spinning uh, hollow diamond uh, appears to be water flowing all around it. Almost a cylinder of water maintaining itself not as a perfect cylinder, but kind of surrounding it. At the very center of that, you can see what looks like a feminine figure, um, kind of bound up within it and pulsing every once in a while with light. So it's the diamonds, the diamond shapes in the middle are like spinning like a big shaft. They are, yeah. yes, spinning in opposite directions. The inside one moving, moving uh, clockwise, the outer one moving counterclockwise. Oh, okay. So two two frames that are surrounding each other. Sorry, it's difficult to describe this thing. I wish I had a one's going this way, one's going this way. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I had a a, a a a perpendicular or a straight on view of it, but I don't have one, unfortunately. Also, it's an icon that I stole from something else. So, uh, yeah. and as you look, you can also see that they seem to be suspended in midair. They are not connected to a particular shaft. Below it, you do see concentric rings that look like um, they are made of of crystal and stone. Um, the crystal seems to be forming letters and shapes, but they are an unfamiliar language. As you can, as you move closer, you can feel a bit of the pulsing wind that blows out of this, and you can also start to see a sort of spiral uh, of uh, of almost a tornado-like effect above it. Little crackles of lightning, a little bit of water flowing around it, a um, little bit of fog swirling it as well, coming from the top of it up to the ceiling. I think this is what Cathron was destroying. Is that the same symbol that was in the other room, except intact? It is. Yep. That probably be. was, except minus all the destruction. I'll reach down and touch the water, because you, you mentioned it seemed like unwelcoming. So what happens when I touch it, just with my hand? This feels like normal water. There's nothing particularly strange about it, although it is cold. Uh, okay. Silas, when you walk over to that side, you notice that there is a sort of pool of of uh, brackish uh, water, not entirely dissimilar to what you found in the in the sewers themselves, seems to be uh, piling up there. And in fact, mm. you can see um, off to the west, uh, it looks like it's sort of flowing inward partially through a barred off area where there's a, a, a metal, what would look like metal poles that have been struck up to try to keep something out. There does seem to be a gap there, though. Um, I'm going to go this way, and I'll take out Vice so that I can see. OK. Uh, it's a 20, 20 bright light, 20 dim light. OK, just changing that now. There you go. You do see, although it's kind of obscured now from the light that's on the on the area, um, similar to the other the other uh, uh, pillar, and in fact, you would note each of the pillars seems to emit a a an arc of light that crosses over the um, the cauldrons, stone cauldrons that that are emitting water. We might have an exit on this side. I've got some water here that looks like the water from the sewer. Does it smell like the water of the sewers? It has a similar smell, although it feels almost concentrated. Ugh. There's also another puddle over here. Um, Silence will just walk over and look out the door without leaving. Negative dexterity saving throw, as the water seems to be flowing outward quickly as you step closer. There you 
Hey, you 17. grab onto the metal grates as you're being dragged through. You get the impression that it is a very much like the other one, a one-way gateway. I will scramble back out. Okay. Uh, and say, well, I think this is our exit. It feels like a one-way gate. And I think it takes us to the sewers. I see. So we're all going to have to get dunked in shit again. Well, whatever works. Annie, you said there's another puddle. Does it look like a teleport puddle? I don't know what a teleport puddle looks like. It looks like a puddle of water like the other one. Again, about an inch deep. There are some plants yeah. that seem to be growing in it. Maybe that's another way they would come in. Maybe there's a different... Entrance? Entrance, yeah. Yeah, there was this other door by the well, Murda called it. Maybe that leads there. Maybe. Yeah. That might have led to another room like this. Hmm. I'll finish my walk around and once yeah. I get into the, the light of anything else, my vice goes to just a dim light. And now you sort of navigated and, and realized it does seem to be perfectly round. And again, it it feels perfectly round. Extraordinarily well designed and unmarred by time or anything else. Did we, uh, did, did Catherine give us something to communicate with her last time we met? I think she gave us something. I'm trying to remember, but it's been a little while. I think you are right. Like it might have been a, one of those sending stones. As you step like towards the edge of this wall, however, both you and Annie get the distinct impression of the, the water that's flowing around the center part of this thing it suddenly shifts and turns and you can feel without seeing its, its attention being drawn to you. And in fact, on that side, kind of indented in the water flowing around it, um, you see the remnants of a face. It's large, square-jawed, diamond-shaped eyes sort of floating in the ever-turning and twisting vortex of water around. And a deep voice reverberates through your mind, not, not in, in, uh, in the sound, uh, not in real sound, but just in your minds. Who dares to disturb the Stormbringer? Have you brought me more to consume? And I think Do we all hear this, gonna... or is it just uh, Silas and Annie? Uh, actually, it's all of you now, as you kind of, uh, it's, it's attention was brought to those two, but it, it, it's a broadcast to the area. Um, I, I don't even think, actually, I don't think your, your protections even help you in this case, Annie. Although it doesn't seem to be reading your mind as much. Yeah. But the sound is, is chilling and powerful, and this thing has an attention to you. You are the Stormbringer? If you do not know this, you do not belong here. And I will destroy you. Wait, the Stormbringer, maybe he is a storm device. I think so. Uh, sorry, Mark, what were you finishing? I will destroy you for violating my sanctity. And I think that's where we're going to end for today, unfortunately. I didn't know how oh. far you would get to here, but you did. Welcome. Woo. You've met Stormbringer. This is going to be bad. For him or for us? Or for them or I think, for us? I think my answer to that is yes. No, it's, <laughs> it's a mannish looking face and a man's voice, but it's a woman that was in the middle of the... Uh, a woman's shape that was in the middle of the diamond forms. Yes. And in fact, you can kind of see that the, 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 the body is twisting in agony and the face looks wild with anger and pain. Doki doki. All right. Any last questions before we uh, move away? Just to make sure the scene is cemented in your minds. Um, I can't think of anything. So the statue looks in pain. So it just the... first thought there's something 
happening to the statue that is the you, you think it's a being inside um but it is pale blue in color uh it looks more like crystal but when you see it move it moves more like a, a living being so okay. i should have added that description in before thank you for asking can the um, colors be rotated or do we just not try that yet sorry what now if the pillars can be rotated you can't try anything at the moment. This is just the instantaneous reaction and last questions to cement this in your mind. Uh, when I was over by the cauldron, is it, does it look like the, the cauldron is one with the ground or it's a stone cauldron that's its own thing but sitting on the ground? Uh, first, you noticed four of them in total. Uh, each of them bathed in the light from two different pillars. Uh, it looks as though the cauldrons are separate things that have been set upon the floor, but they are heavy about, in stone. Uh, about how big around are the cauldrons? Uh, the the diameter of the cauldron is about four feet. The height okay. is only about uh, three feet. Yeah. But they look like thick stone. Okay. Trobar time. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's... Oh, are any of the crystals going on the side of the the blue crystals there? Are any of them glowing? They seem to be sparkling and glowing, not consistently. Uh, it's almost perhaps a side effect of the light itself. Yeah, like they're reflecting light. Okay. Uh, actually, make an arcana check. I would also uh, allow a nature check. Okay, arcana. 16. Um Weirdly enough, uh, you've heard of, uh, well, there's a couple of different terms, but magiophage is one of them. And you get the impression, kind of like the plants growing out of the water, these might have grown out because this magic light is there. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting for later. But I don't know any of that. It's just pretty lights. <laughs> it's just pretty lights for now. All right, any last questions? Anything else to cement this in your minds? I can't think of anything. That's no, fair. Same. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything obvious missing. I want to thank uh, uh, Marie in particular because I hadn't described the woman properly inside. This sort of crystalline woman with uh, the fluid motions of a person. Well, with that mystery... So, and, and on that note, like, it does it look like the woman is talking or it's something enveloped like affecting the woman that's talking. It looks like something affecting the woman. It is not her not her mouth moving when the voice moves. Okay. For when the voice sounds or That was originally what I was trying to assert. So okay. I, I just hadn't that. worded words are hard. No, nope, that's totally fine. That's why I'm asking because I, I often leave out things. Uh, part of the problem being so close to this is I sometimes forget that I haven't told you all the things about it, which is why It's I obvious ask. to you, but it's, it's in exactly. your brain. It's in my brain, and getting it into your brains is the hardest job I have. Okay, uh, well, with that, and with the possible confrontation of the Stormbringer coming up next week, I want to thank my players for joining me this week. In this new era, in this new year, things have all changed. Well, not really. I mean, things haven't changed that much, but it's all great and, and going to be terrible from now on out. So, wait, no, that's not what I want to say. Dangerous things are happening. you got to go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> But in a week, you get to go back to work in a fantasy world. And that's a yeah. lot more fun, I hope, anyway. Well, with that, thank you once again for playing. Thank you for watching. You might have seen this on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock Atlantic time. That's 2 o'clock Eastern time and a bunch of other time zones. It has different times. That's just the way time zones work. Um, you may also be watching this on youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of Omatia playlist, which has everything we've done, or, or uh, The Great Confusion, L-O-T-D-I, The Great Confusion is the other playlist. Look for just these episodes. Also, go to facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I if you want to chat about what we've done. I want to thank again my players and wish you all a good new year because we've, we've done Yay. it. This is a whole new year. Everything is is wonderful and terrible.